At home with a lifetime of stories and songs People we've met and the places we've gone Along the way found where and how we belong At home with a lifetime of stories and songs Welcome to more songs and stories from home Podcasts that give voice to songs with stories and stories with songs written and being written over the course of a lifetime, often illuminating the journey we all make, together and alone, finding our way home. Concert for the Class of 65, Part 3. This part of the concert begins with a song for Clarice. When she and her siblings were cleaning out the family home after their parents died, they discovered a trunk in the attic with letters their dad had written to their mom. Letters he wrote from Dachau, where he was sent as an army physician after that death camp was liberated at the end of World War II. Clarice wrote a heartfelt book about how the family had been haunted by her dad's experiences from the war and how opening that trunk would help lead to some long-needed healing for her, for the family, and in many ways for the rest of us. As the song I wrote for her says, when that trunk up in the attics opened, after all these years, and everything that it contains is not something to fear, we can start to see the good things. And what else that trunk might hold when it is finally opened, fears are faced and stories told. As healthy as our stories. The next song was for Bill, who among other things was a poet of the natural world. The song talks about how Bill's poems, how they invite me, how they invite us to see, to experience, to love our world. They invite us to take care of that world. He wasn't able to be at the reunion, but I sang the song over the phone to him before the reunion. A song that talks about how his words are like breathing in the world. Words that take our breath away. Words that offer breathing space. A place we may exhale. Bill's unexpected death shortly after the reunion, a reminder of the preciousness of life and the world we share. While many of the songs sung at that concert were written for the concert, this next song, The Magic Carpet, was written years earlier for my friend Dan about a love affair he had with his car in high school. The Magic Carpet, oh, how she could fly. Oh, how she made the times go by. On nights like this, those feelings, they just come back alive. So let's roll The Magic Carpet out tonight. And the last song in this part of the concert is Dan and I playing our four-string banjos, something we first did when we were in junior high. We played our banjos and we sang together all the way through high school, together on that stage one more time. Clarice and I, uh, we've been friends since well, probably seven, maybe six or seven years old. And for the longest time, I, I mean, I just knew, I knew, I knew the Wilsies because my, because uh, her dad gave my dad a bowling ball for Christmas. <laughs> and I don't think he really bowled at the time. <laughs> but I remember this kind of force of nature coming in at to our home at Christmas time 
with this great jovialness and this great bigger than lifeness, and my dad greeted him with his bigger than lifeness, and this thing wrapped up that turned out to be a bowling bag with a bowling ball. And so for all those years I, 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 in our relationship, she was, the, she was the person whose dad gave my dad a bully ball. <laughs> and, uh, and like I say, here, here's, here's where those happy tears come. Because she, in, in, the, in the stories that she's telling, she's telling about all the different things that were there in her family in the most loving way that anyone possibly could. And, uh, and in the end, took some of the hardest times in their family's life and in her dad's life and in the life of our, of our world and made something good out of it. And uh, things changed for our family when dad came back from the war. It was us who knew he was, not who he was before. And my parents put what life had been in a trunk they locked away and never said another word about those long lost days. And the trunk up in the attic stayed out on the water mementos, journals, letters, and our unspoken fears, and the hardest thing, imagining what else that trunk might hold. If it were ever open, tears were face, and stories told. And we were going to sell the house after my parents died. We took that trunk, we looked in, we wanted it to look inside. And in the light of day felt harmless, all those things held there within. Without the silence or the secrets, healing could begin. When the trunk up in the attic was opened after all the years, and the momentous journal's letters were nothing more to fear, and there was no more imagining what else that trunk might hold. Once it had been opened, fears were faced, and stories told. You see, lots of us, we have a hidden box somewhere, and it's filled with fear and memories that we find so hard to share. If perhaps that box is open, there's a chance that we might find those things that have defined us have become ours to define. When the trunk up in the attic is opened after all the years, the mementos, journals, letters, or everything that it contains, nothing more to fear. So we can start to see the good things and what else the trunk might hold. Once it has been opened, fears are faced and stories told. So her book's available too, <laughs> and it's it's an amazing multi-layered story because her dad was in Dachau when he was one of the liberators. So it's amazing, and it's a, it's amazing the 
talents that our, that our class has. Again, just singing, telling stories through the songs that we have. And uh, Bill Yaki was a, was a poet. And he's a natural, he writes about the natural world. And uh, from, my, from my experience, if you, if you, he's got, I think, two or three poetry books. And uh, I'd recommend any of them. And uh, well, this song kind of tells, tells the story of what I think of his poems. Your words reveal worlds hiding in plain sight. Filled with wonder, beauty, and delight. There upon the page, they come alive, sound by sound, and line by line. Words that are like breathing in the world. Words that take my breath away. Words that offer breathing space, a place. I may exhale. Inspired, I nod, get up, put down your book. I go outside this time and I really look. And what I see is to see this way it took someone looking up and writing down. Words that are like breathing in the world. Words that take my breath away. Words that offer breathing space. A place I may exist. Now, this much I This, this next song was written 40 years ago, was, and it was written for Dan. And uh, I know he, uh, he always drove a Hillman, but I couldn't write a song, I couldn't figure out a song for a Hillman. And uh, so, uh, so I put him in a Chevrolet. And I figured he'd forgive me, because, well, he had to. And, uh, and so, uh, I stopped by his place, and, and I said, well, so Dan, I, 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 I sort of explained to him, I just couldn't, I tried hard to write a song about a Hillman, and it didn't work. So here's a song about a Chevrolet, and he kind of gets his, his eyes widen, and he takes me out to his garage, and he takes the tarp off of this Chevy convertible. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's a nice summer day, so off we go in his magic carpet. Oh, and then this song, so if you, if you, uh, you can go to my website and buy the Between Friends album that McCoy and I did. Well, McCoy stole this song. It may, he made it his own, but I'm going to take it over tonight. So. Bouncing by in my old Chevrolet, just for a minute, I can't stay. It was a night like this that the car got her name, the magic car, it could take us away. Nights like this, we got nothing to fear. Six pack of two, and we put her in here, that's a lie. There was nowhere to go, but we couldn't stay here. Get on that magic carpet and just disappear. 
Driving through those August nights with the windows all rolled down. All gassed up and ready to go with the radio up loud. And the magic carpet, oh, how she could fly. Oh, how she made the times go by. Trips that we planned but never did take I'm wondering why now why we decided to wait Cause gas was cheap and we could get away Oh, that was before the, that bad baby's pain Settling down was never our game But that was before the babies came The magic carpet's the only thing that stays the same My friend Dan Eaton. So inside banjo jokes. No, they're not jokes. The difference between a banjo and a Harley. You can tune a Harley. But so when we were kids and starting out. Um, we all, my dad, my dad let me have a banjo like like Dan's is right there. It's, it's called a Vega Pro, for strictly for amateurs. <laughs> and, uh, and what I wanted was a Vega Box Four. And uh, so fortunately, uh, my wife has grandchildren to visit, and she leaves town for a while. And I'll visit the website, visit the internet, and look for Vega Box Fours. And then I found one. And I found one that, uh, uh, that, uh, that Eddie Peabody played that I could have. And so I uh, wrote a check. I wrote a letter to Buddy Walker, who I bought that was going to buy the banjo from, and uh, put it on the counter, getting ready to mail the next day. And the next morning, I go downstairs to free the cat. And there's kind of squishy. And the... the, the uh, Downstairs was flooded, and it, it was just as it, <laughs> it cost just as much to we no insurance if it's the groundwater, so it cost just as much as it would have cost to, for this Vega box banjo. So easy come, easy go. But I told I wrote, I wrote buddy wrote back to buddy in, in Maryland. I said if I, I I can give you a few hundred bucks if you can hold it for me, and he sold it immediately to a museum. And uh, eventually I got this Vega box. And I told Dan, tonight, today I'm playing it, but we're going to play songs that the last time we played it was 57 years ago. <laughs> so, and we're under rehearsed, but we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so we're doing Just Because first or Bye Bye? Bye Bye first. Bye Bye. All right.
Thank you for listening to or watching more songs and stories from home. Come back next time for part four of the class of 65, knowing you're always welcome here at home with a lifetime of stories and songs.